Good morning, everyone. As you know that sharing the thoughts and conversation is the most important aspects of life. So with this, we are introducing our one more section in talks with top educators of the city. So here we come at the Jagran Public School, Gomti Nagar, Lucknow. So let's come and discuss the important aspects, important views and ideas of the principal of Jagran Public School. Here we go. So today we are starting this conversation with the valuable thoughts of uh, Sachidanand Singh sir. So starting with the uh, my first question, I just want to know that uh, what are your views about how has the teacher's role changed over the years? Over the years, a lot of changes have come about in methodology as well as in the attitudes of teachers. We remember in our time there used to be dedicated teachers but we don't find teachers like that anymore. Out of 250 to 350 applications, you will hardly find two or three that are worth considering. Obviously, the skill levels of the teachers have gone down and somewhere it appears as though the training schools are to be blamed because they are not tra uh, training the teachers in the modern uh, ways of education. And if somebody has to be blamed for it, I think the B. Ed. schools are not doing their job. Earlier, the teachers were very humble, they never used to get so much of money, but they had a certain kind of love. They were connected to their students. But the modern day teachers, I find, at least in the last six to seven years, I have seen that they are not at all connected with their students. They treat the students uh, as though they are numbers, they are not human beings. And the basic job of the teacher now seems to be just to transact the syllabus and come out of the classes, which is hardly what our teachers used to do. They understood the students and they knew that there was a way in which each student could be approached and they did that in the classes. And that is the reason why uh, we have learned and the present day generation also learns, but you know, there's no emotion, there's no feeling behind that transaction of knowledge. Very well said. Uh, sir, do you think that in this career-oriented age, sports and other physical activities are getting due attention in schools? If not, how can this be rectified? Well, sports and games are a very important part of teaching and the trouble with most schools nowadays is that they don't have a playground. We have a huge playground and so many other fields where all kinds of sporting activities are possible. Firstly, uh, affiliation should never be given to schools who do not have uh, playing fields. That having, uh, having said that, I would like to point out that there was a time when we used to have the sports and games in the evenings, particularly. All the inter-house uh, sports, whether it's football, hockey, boxing, archery, shooting, whatever, used to happen in the evenings. But these days, the students have started attending too many coaching classes because of which they don't turn up in the evenings for the sports and games. Consequently, the Interhouse active the the interhouse sports and games that we have have taken a nose dive. We hardly find eleven people to you know constitute a team in every house, and that is what sports has come to. The way to go about it is now that you allot one hour to sports at least every week. Like we've decided, we'll go for a zero period on Wednesdays. Early in the morning, we'll have all activities, including inter-house uh, games and everything, PT, march past. 
So that is an essential part because otherwise the body, if you don't look after the body, the body becomes, you know, it keeps on growing, you become obese if there is no exercise. Everybody knows that a bit of uh, physical activity is required, otherwise your mind will not be active. You will start feeling sleepy in the classes. Yes yeah, sir, uh, very well said that physical activities are required and timing flexibility should also be there. So sir, uh, uh, this next question is a deep one. Uh, but, sir, what roles does education play in a country like ours? Well, everything depends on education. If you leave out, you know, the prominent fields like politics and administration, there is nothing that is possible without education. Basically, we have to change the mindset of the parents who just want their children to go and become doctors and engineers. This has to go. Let the students go out and do whatever they want to do. Somebody may be very interested in the mountains, let him go to the mountains, explore them and come out with something. Somebody who is interested in dance should be allowed to go to the last extreme, doing what he likes to do, following his passion. Until and unless education becomes free. And by free I mean the, uh, the pressure that is exercised by the parents that they should either become doctors and engineers. This has to go. And as soon as that goes, we will start getting skilled people in so many different fields that are important, apart from politics and administration, which everybody thinks is, you know, everything. But there are so many other fields. For instance, there are NGOs, there are businesses, there are all kinds of things going around. There are uh, academies, there are research organizations, you know. And I feel that until and unless a number of our best minds drift in the direction of research, the future of the country is bleak. The best minds choose to become engineers. They do not go into research, whereas research is what we need. That is what the country needs. When we have a lot of knowledge base, we can do anything with it. So I believe that, you know, somebody should talk to these students and try to convince the parents not to exercise so much of pressure. Because most of them are doing mathematics, which I don't think they understand. Mathematics is a very abstract subject. Mathematics is not just calculation. If you are able to solve sums, it doesn't mean that you know mathematics. I, I insisted upon my daughter to give up mathematics after class 10, although she got a hundred in class 10. She gave up mathematics in 11 and now she is a very well qualified doctor at the SGPGI. So just because you are getting marks, it doesn't mean that you know the subject. People with passion should be allowed to come out and they are the ones who should be recognized. Okay, sir. So, what would be your advice to students on the formula for success in studies and in most aspects of life? Well, studies are hardly as important as students think they are. I think the best people in the world or perhaps or at least the most, satis uh, the most successful people in the world are those who are average students. None of them are toppers. You take any example, whether it's Sachin Tendulkar or you know anyone. Most of them were struggling at school. I was talking to Dhoni's principal, Mr. D. R. Singh, and he told me that uh, his blood pressure used to go up every time it was exam time because Dhoni was hardly there, and he thought he was going to be the first person in DAV Shamli who was going to fail the exam. So I don't think. All these things have uh, so much of importance as is given to them. Basically what matters is your mind. What have you made out of your mind? And I think that is what education is all about. It is not about teaching you things. It is about preparing you to learn from everything that is outside you and do what you can best do. That should be, you know, the aim of education instead of giving you jobs. You should be prepared in such a way that you can take up any job. 
and do anything with it. I think there is no limit to what a person can do if he has the right mindset. The mind is what we have to work on. Right, sir. So, and sir, uh, it is said that one learns something every day. How much do students and teachers contribute in your daily learning process? Well, every day I discover that something or the other is going wrong. And that is where I correct myself. If there is a certain policy that is being implemented and I get a feedback from some of the students that this is having an adverse effect or something, I immediately take it back. You have to keep changing. You have to adjust and make sure that everybody is accommodated. And sir, what is the most satisfying aspect of your work or profession and the most challenging one? The most satisfying is when somebody comes to you after 30 years and you are not able to recognize him and then he takes you back, you know, down memory lane and you recall a certain classroom event that had happened. He has remembered it, you have forgotten it and it brings tears to the eyes every time some student comes, comes up out of the blue and he makes you think about 30 years ago, 35 years ago, that is most satisfying and the most challenging is what to do with students post covid a number of students are hardly half of themselves after this pandemic they are not able to pay attention for extended durations they are not able to understand things even if they understand they are not able to you know do anything with it like if you say stand up, he look at you and smile. That is what we noticed soon after the pandemic when they started attending their classes. Somebody told a child to stand up, he smiled, he understood, but he never got up, you know. So all kinds of things have happened and the greatest challenge now, challenge now is to bring them to the post COVID levels. First, we prepare them to receive education and then we educate them. Most schools have uh, been very quick to say that the after effects of COVID are over, but those with a little more sensitivity know that it is far from over and there is plenty that needs to be done before they turn into normal students or at least pre-COVID standards of normalcy are restored. Sir, has any student left an indelible mark on your thinking or values or any students for whom you have learned something valuable? Okay. I, I, I came across a student like that when I was teaching at St. Francis. Uh, he was in class 10, I believe, when I was the class teacher. And uh, he started crying in school one day. So, it was a lovely class and they are still connected with me. And uh, somebody came to me and he said, Sir, Ravi is crying. So I went up to him and I asked him, why are you crying? He was crying uncontrollably and tears were coming out of his eyes. I didn't know what to do. I hugged him and then after some time gave him water to drink and all that. After some time he opened up. He said, Sir, the child who comes second in my class told me today that because you are in my section, I will never be able to come first in my class. So I am not going to appear for the next exam. I said, don't be silly. Don't do that. Don't do that. He says, sir, he's got more marks than the toppers of the other sections. But because I am 40 or 50 marks ahead of him, he says that he will never be able to get the medal here in school in class. That fellow was going through an experience and I don't want to talk much about that experience but in the course of the day, of that particular day, his parents came to me, I was living in the school premises and they left their son with me. I asked them to leave their son with me. He stayed with me for a couple of days in which I was with him 24 hours 
and I brought him out of that. It was a mystical experience. Many will not believe it, so I will not go into it. But it was a spiritual experience of sorts. After that, he came out of it. He qualified his IIT exam. He went to IIT Kanpur, then he went to Germany, he did his heavy en engineering from there. Then he bumped into some Nobel laureate who was working on artificial intelligence and together they moved over to the Chicago Stock Exchange and they've made millions of dollars. So he came back to me and he said that this is all because of you. I said, don't be stupid, it's because of you. I think I'll never be able to forget Ravi Prakash Srivastava. Very well said, sir. And sir, your message to school students, any specific message you want to convey? Well, my message to the students is, uh, don't take things to heart. You know, these days people have become very, very emotional. And anything that happens, you know, puts them into depression, somebody becomes depressed, somebody feels like ending up his life. And you should not take social media and virtual reality very seriously. There is no need to take it so seriously. Think about your real life friends instead of your virtual friends. Today, students have started fighting with their real friends just because of something in the virtual world. That is stupid. You have to make sure the people in flesh and blood who you are interacting with every day are closer to you than all those blooming people on social media. So that is my message. Don't take it too seriously. There is so much that you can get from social media. But apart from that, it has a negative influence as well, which you have to avoid. Thank you so much, sir, for giving your valuable thoughts. And I am very sure that this conversation will surely put a remark in the students and the teachers or the dilemma the teachers or the students have regarding the questions which we talked about. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure talking to you. Very well said, sir. And uh, I am really very sure that uh, this conversation will put a remark with the questions and the dilemma in the mind of the teachers students that what they have to do the message which you gave to the students were tremendous and uh, we will surely come up with the different activities like this and uh, we will rock and uh, thank you so much for giving your valuable time thank you so much